Hi there, Richard here, the RPS Project, on the sofa. Uh, what am I going to be doing today? Not a lot on the sofa, that's for sure, am I? But um, what I am going to be doing is talking about books. Now, before I get started, all the books I'm going to show are books that I use personally, or have read and I found informative in some way. Uh, I am not sponsored by anybody or any organisation related to the books. I'm not by the publishers or the authors in any way. These are just happen to be the books that I have bought and used myself. So let's get started. First one, Transistor Handbook. Quite a good little book. Um, I found it sometimes a little, how can I say, not complicated, but um, not straightforward. But at other times, it seems to miss bits of information. So um, you're left sort of with more questions than you've got answered. But as a general rule, as a handbook, as it is, um, this is a very, very good book, actually. It uh, gets you into understanding what the transistors are, what different types of transistors there are, um, and generally how how they're used in a circuit. It, obviously this goes into more detail, this will tell you like uh, how the transistor is made up, um, how it's formed, how the different uh, structures of different types of transistors, because obviously it doesn't do just the one, it does, it does all the different types of transistors, um, bipolar junction transistors, MOSFETs, JFETs, um, and go through quite comprehensively how it's done, it says on the back here, bipolar transistor, power transistor, RF transistors, insulated gate bipolar transistors, junction FETs, MOSFETs. Now this one is, uh, who's the, CJ Publishing, and the author is Cletus J. Kayser. Quite informed, I quite like that one. Next one I got is Starting Electronics. Everybody who starts and does electronics thinks I must get a book on starting electronics. <coughs> Excuse me. Fourth edi edition by Newness, I presume that's the um, publisher. Um, and the author is Keith Brindley. Not a bad book. I, I quite liked it. It's, um, it does start at the very basics, which is good, especially if you've never done any electronics ever before. This will allow you to understand the very basics, what a circuit is, how putting a component in a circuit, what effects that might have, um, uh, things like uh, what a capacitor is, what a uh, resistor is, how it can be used, um, uh, and the equations that go with it. Capacitance values here, um, a little equation in that. Um, some diagrams, um, usually black and white. So it does give you some instructions uh, on what to do. I say it is on the basic level, then it's got here um, circuits and looks like uh, uh, logic gates and stuff. So, as an overall starter, if you are just starting electronics, then this is a good starter book. <coughs> I was wondering whether to show this one or not, but I'm going to. It's called Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Third edition. Now the publisher is that microprofessional.com, I think. But the uh, the author is Stan Gibelisco. Now, if that sounds familiar at all, he does have his own YouTube channel where he actually goes through this book and explains some of the uh, diagrams that he's uh, done in here. So, let's have a quick uh, nosy on, if I can find something, to probably can't straight off. Um, you may find that uh, 
identifying the building blocks, not sure what this one is, a combination of a crystal radio. You might find that Stan may have actually done a walkthrough of that diagram. Um, and again, I'm mentioning that because I know that I've obviously watched it. I think that's where I saw saw it first and uh, I went, that looks an alright book, I'll get that. And I did, and it goes through schematics, you know, what these, what happens in it, in a diagram, in a circuit, you know, how you look at that circuit and understand the different building blocks that make up the circuit. Uh, and understanding the schematic of a schematics in a circuit is halfway there to understanding what the thing's doing. Now this one, ABC of capacitors. Now this is done by Wirth Electronic, German company, and Wirth are manufacturer of um, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors and other types I expect, but it is a book on capacitors by a manufacturer of capacitors. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, not sure who the author is exactly, except that it is the first edition by Verth Electronic, so I just presume it must be the, the manufacturer deciding to put a book out there about capacitors. Now this one is very, very techy. Um, it does go into the principles of how a capacitor is put together, um, how they work in their fundamental basics, so a very much for those who have an understanding, a better understanding of physics, if you're not very good with physics, this book is really tacky. So it's an enjoyable book to read and get through, but it's on a level where if you really need to know exactly what type of capacitor you want to put in a circuit and you've got to understand charge rates and, and voltage flows and stuff like that, then, then this is great. But if you don't need to know all that, then it's a bit over the top, even though it is only a small book. Hardback as well. Then we've got <coughs> Encyclopedia of Electronics. Great book, set of three. One, two, three. Um, very informative because these are uh, more like a reference book. Let's go and choose a, a section to look at. Motors. So you've got motors in here, which is a big section in itself. You've got a section for each of these: DC motor, AC motor, servo motor, motor. Sorry, stepper motor. Um, page two hundred three. Let's have a look at the stepper motor. Here we go. Stepper motor. What it does, it gives you a brief overview. Stepper motor. Also often referenced. Oh, sorry, also often referred to as a stepping motor and sometimes known as a step motor. It gives you a brief little description. Then it tells you what it does, how it works. Um, we've got reluctance stepper motors, power management stepper motors of different types. It does give you diagrams and they're in colour, so well, quite a few of them are, so very helpful. Very informative, uh, tells you about all the different types of things about the motor. I say different types of motors and this one motors because there's so much it goes on. It says there variants, yeah, lots of variants. So, multi phase voltage change, uh, how to use it, gives you a basic understanding, a basic guide on how they could be used in a circuit. Doesn't give you doesn't give you an instruction so like if you're going to use this product you have to do this this and this to make it work what it does it tells you what the product does how it works and what sort of circuits and things it can be used in so that's what it does um, <clears throat> what can go wrong it's even a section that tells you yeah what can go wrong I don't know if I can see that what can go wrong so yeah very informative very instructive these are very good as a reference 
book. The first one, sorry, this, this one should I say is by Maker Magazine or said here Maker Media. The author is Charles Platt, Volume 1, which is Power Sources and Conversion, Resistors, Capacitors, Inductors, Switches, Encoders, Relays, and Transistors. Volume 1. <coughs> Volume 2. Now, this one has Charles Platt and Frederick Janssen as the authors, still Make Magazine or Maker Media. Signal Processing, LEDs, LCDs, Audio, Thyristors, Digital Logic, and Amplifiers. And the third one, also by Charles Platt and Frederick Janssen, on the Maker Media still. Uh, number three, this one, uh, yes, there is three in the set, in the volume, whatever you want to call it. And this one is Sensors, Location, Presence, Proximity, Orientation, Oscillation, Force Load, Human Input, Liquid and Gas Properties, Light, Heat, Sound, Electricity. So every sense you could probably think of. And again, nice diagrams in this. They really are. It's a nice book. Um, all three of them are. They, according to this, they're about $25. It's about £20 in the UK each. So once you bought all three, you've spent something like £60. Which is the other thing. The cost of books, which brings me on to uh, the last one that I've got, The Art of Electronics. This thing is expensive. It's an expensive book. It is, in the UK, about £60 or so. Um, uh, I expect in the US and other places it's, it's something like $75, $80. Very expensive, really, for a book, but very informative. Unlike the encyclopedias, which are really sort of reference books, and I treat them as reference books, very good if you think you want to do a circuit, you want to put an item in that circuit, will that item work the way you expect? <clears throat> you can look in the encyclopedia and make a decision as to whether you think that's going to be right for you or right for your circuit. There's this one, The Art of Electronics. Now this is Cambridge University Press. And as we can see, the authors are Paul Horowitz and Winfield Hill. It's the third edition. <coughs> Excuse me. Such a dry throat today. Now, this book will start with resistors and take you all the way through. Actually, it starts with power and potential difference, I think. But it takes you from there all the way through all the main areas and topics of electronics very informative, very instructional. Unlike, say, the encyclopedias which are referenced, this is very instructional, this book. Lots of pages, very thin paper, lots of information on each page, so there's lots to learn. I've started reading it, haven't got that far through yet, but, um, yes, my, uh, my guide, I suppose, <coughs> to learning electronics. Um, already getting a little bit battered because I do actually read it. Um, as you go through it there are little like uh, exercises you can do um, to obviously understand what it's uh, what it's going on, what it's teaching you. So unlike some books that will tell you a principle, give you an equation, an example and then that's it and then it moves on. Sometimes that's a bit disjointed and I can't there isn't the flow that you require to, to understand and to learn um, what you're trying to learn from the book. Whereas this book is very good at doing that. It's a good flow. Um, and I found that actually it's easy to go back as well. Sometimes you get a bit lost. You think, well, I'll go back a bit. You think, well, it doesn't make any sense. I'll just have to go back to the beginning of the chapter. Whereas this book, you don't have to. I find that if I get a little bit lost, I can take a step back, just a maybe a page, and just go through it again. Uh, get to the little exercises and um, find that uh, I'm starting to understand it better. So <coughs> you, it's, uh, it's just a very good informative book. So they're the main books that I've got. I've got a couple of others, a few others hanging around. Not quite so good, not quite so helpful. Um, but yeah, they're, they're books. If you need uh, books for electronics to learn, it's up to the learner, each, each person has a different preference as to what sort of things they're going to learn from. So for me, they're the books that I use. Um, so it's a case of go out there, 
get and find some books, see what works for you. There you go, books. So, there you go. If you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.